right, so next dip up in this uh, series of programming tutorials, we're looking at calculations. So I'm going to create a new program called Calculations, and I feel like I've mistyped in there, and I have. Oops. Calculations. All right. So this is a fairly simple program that runs through some of the basic calculations that exist in, in the Python programming language. So first up, I'm going to paste in my header block. And then I'm going to also add in a description. And that, uh, the description in this case is uh, doing calculations. Let's make it easy. Maths stuff. All right. So first off, I have to set up a bunch of variables. So as always, what is good practice is to declare your variables at the start. In this case, I1 equals 10. I2 equals 4. I, do I need to know three? Don't know. Let's leave that for the moment. We might even get back to it a little later. So, actually, yes, I'll go for an I3 equals zero. This may cause some problems because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for some input. Put, type in a number. going to tidy this up so it actually looks neat. Alright, so I'm just going to test this to make sure that it works. And the little play arrow has gone, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I should be able to play, ah, run calculations there. Type in a number, three. Great. I'm going to test it again because if, and this is worth knowing, if I type in the word three, Oh, it seems to work, but we haven't actually done anything with that value yet because even though I've set it up as what looks like an integer and I plan on using it as an integer, um, Python is a language that's considered loosely typed, so I can put anything into that in integer value. So what I'm going to do first up, um, and I'm also going to add in a fourth value, is the answer. So, first up is addition with the extra i in there. So, my answer equals i1 plus i2. Then, Print. Now to print this stuff out, I'm going to have to convert the i1 value into a string so I can actually output it because it's stored as a number. So str for this conversion and inside the brackets I'm going to pass in a value and this is basically will tell Python when it goes through and interprets this. Oops. to convert it to a string. I can remove those and you can see it break, which is always a funny thing to watch. So I'll do that with the answer when I get through to it. So I've converted the first one to a string, the second one to a string. I have to add each of these pieces together to make a long string. So, um, all right, and then finally add on the I answer. So if I actually test this, which is always a good idea, as you go along, I'm going to type in a number, and it spits an error at me because there's something wrong. It could not concatenate, which is join strings together, uh, of an integer value. So if I actually go through here and str and open that bracket and wrap it around that, 
run it again, and this time I type in you know, the same number, one, oh, 10 plus four equals 14. Brilliant, that works. Now this is where the art of lazy starts to get in because I've done the addition, and all I'm gonna do is go copy, paste, subtraction, minus, minus, and that should work. In fact, I might even comment out this instruction so I don't have to do it while I'm testing. And then I can actually grab both of those and do this one more time. Because we have multiplication and division. And I'm just gonna be really easy on that. Notice with the multiplication, it uses the star, which is shift eight. Um, just because it's, um, because using the X, which looks like the time symbol, um, has a different meaning in the program language, and that's what they settled on. The divide, you can see that slash there. Now, there may actually, I'll have to check this, and I'll do this now. Because I'm curious myself. You can actually put the slash either of two ways, and that's got an underscore, so a little red wiggly line, which tells me not a spelling error, but an a other problem. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Actually, I can test it now to see if it works. Yep, unexpected error, because it doesn't recognize what that is. And it probably has a different meaning in the language, so. Here we have three basic calculations running. And if I run it again, we'll see the answers. The last one is a little bit of a nuisance. We need to actually convert that into an integer. So int wrapped around to there. That should then work. Yep. So what I've done is when it calculates this, one divided by two, or I one divided by I two, or 10 divided by four in this case, it gives it a, a floating point number, 2.5. However, I want to transform that into an integer only number. So I do what's called casting to convert to that type. So here I'm casting to an integer and through this entire process, I've been casting integers into strings so that it, the programming language knows what it's dealing with. If I go back to the top here and change I1 to seven, and yeah, I can leave that at four. I run this again with a little play symbol at the top. You can see here it readjusts all its values. So this is great. What I'm gonna do now is just repeat this entire sequence except take this little command here. And I'm going to call this test set one. Oops. If I, if I can actually spell. Set, or I don't hit the wrong key. And now I'm actually going to adjust things and update I2 with any number we type in. And I'm going to call this test set two. This way, when I test it, which I, from looking at this, it's Control Shift F10. All right, let's try that. Control Shift F10. All right, runs the calculations. Click in the box, and I'll give it a new number. Let's say five. That's perfectly fine, and it hates me. Great. So, what have I done wrong? Oh, I've got to convert this typed-in number into something that can be dealt with. So, again, the casting function, and we'll try that again. Control Shift F10, and I'll type in five, and it works. So, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you. Um, there will be a couple of questions, but basically, the goal here is to be able to understand the maths manipulation. The only one that I have not covered is the modulus function, and, the modulus function is basically the percent symbol, or shift five. And 
modulus. I think no, it's moduli. Or M O D U L O or modulus. And I can run that again and it will give you a bunch of answers and a bunch of reactions based on that. But that's questions to be answered in the booklet and I'll leave that up to you guys.